while the full forward line is completed by Liam Cahill and Brian O'Mara. In Wexford's last match against Waterford, Tom Dempsey showed he's lost none of his scoring touch or sharpness, finishing with a goal at eight points. Sean Flood and Martin Storey are back after a bout of flu. Flood is at left half-back, Storey on the 40. Dara Ryan was outstanding in New Ross two weeks ago, while the partnership of Adrian Fenlon and Ryan Quigley looks highly promising. One other man back is Rath Nearest Paul Codd after the disappointment of Wednesday's club final. The referee Sean McMahon getting this match underway. It's an extremely blustery day and a gale blowing down the field favouring Tipperary in the first half. So the uh, Wexford backs have been well warned. That's Ryan Quigley trying to get that ball up towards Mitch Jordan. Full forward this afternoon. Now in towards Paul Codd. Six points he scored in the club final on Wednesday for Rath Muir. Towards Tom Dempsey. And Kevin O'Brien coming out, making his first save for Tipperary in this match. Picked up again by Mitch Jordan, blocked down very well. And they try to finish the move off in there. And the referee will go in to try and end the uncertainty. Larry Murphy, the one picking himself off the ground finally. Good save that was indeed by Kevin O'Brien. And the referee will throw the ball in on the 20-meter line. Played away by Donica Fahey. This young Tipperary side being guided now by Nicky English, Ken Hogan and Jack Bergen. Played away smartly there. Declan Ruth, though, just mishitting that one. Furlong, giving it away to Eddie Tucker. Looking for the first score of the match, it's a fine shot. From just inside the 65 metre line. And it's a point to no score. That was uh, breaking away from uh, the back that time, and it was Eddie Tucker who took the shot. Tucker with the red helmet, pointing it over the bar. Shawnee Flood put under some pressure back there. Tucker once again had a chance before. Hoping to really seize his opportunity in this particular playing season. David Kennedy has been doing well in training. That fell beautifully there. Cahill with the shot, and it drops over. Liam Cahill, Homer All Star. So two attacks for Tipperary, producing two points. Crowd of about five or six thousand here this afternoon. A variation of the direction from Fitzhenry from that puck out. Trying to target Rory McCarthy. But it's coming back into the face once again of the Wexford backs. William Marr dropped in towards Cahill, trying to break it down for somebody coming on to it. Brian O'Mara is hanging around there. A low shot inside towards Declan Brown, who hasn't really had uh, much of a chance so far. Out it comes to Eddie Tucker, who got the first point of the match, and he's got the latest. Tipperary doing nicely, good scoring average, and a second for Eddie Tucker. Eddie Tucker leaps in the air, but it's caught instead by Dara Ryan. Foul as he was taking the ball out. Once again, Declan Ruth from Shamrocks. Towards Tom Dempsey, held by Liam Sheedy. And this is a scoring chance for Wexford. It's Paul Codd who's got across to take this. Wexford's captain, and he's put it over the bar. First point has taken 11 minutes. It's come courtesy of Paul Codd from the free. And it's curious that Paul was back in training with the county panel on Thursday, day after losing the All-Ireland Club final. Good play there by Paul Ormond. Towards Declan Brown. A tip player down injured all this while. It's Tommy Dunn. But they have another chance here. And it's Declan Brown this time. Stopped by Fitzhenry. Whipped away out of danger by Keogh. Momentarily, that is. And the final pass from Declan Brown just hit too strongly. That was a very good save by Damien Fitzhenry. And it was hit in by Declan Brown. First chance he's had, and the goalkeeper does really well. Over the head of Brian O'Mara, gathered instead by Adrian Fenlon. Oh, he's going like a tank, taking it right through the Tipperary cover. Over John Lahey's head. Martin Storey trying to get inside. Liam Sheedy's uh, defence. Sheedy holding him back, and it'll be a free from the 20-metre line. And this is where Wexford can draw within two points of tip. So, Paul Codd, who spent much of the last uh, ten, five minutes at least, to playing in midfield, taking this free. Oh! That 
has gone over the bar and they're appealing that it went inside and went through the net and one of the Wexford mentors back there it may be Pat Murphy who's back there I think felt it went through a hole in the netting the referee will have to have a word with his umpires about that that's Pat Murphy the PRO behind the uh, goal there and it's a goal Cobb has struck a goal in dramatic circumstances where did the ball go under or over it went under very definitely it's Eddie Enright who's trying to get it out for uh, Tipperary left there once again for Ryan Quigley having a very good match the midfielder and he was fouled after the ball was hit away by Remy Ryan even though Tipperary had the advantage Remy spoken to so Paul Codd is coming to take the free, which uh, results from that foul by Raby Ryan. This time I'm sure he'll try and put it over the bar. And he does so very, very successfully. And that's now a goal and two points for Paul Codd. And Wexford go in front for the first time. Kevin O'Brien's puck out. Tipperary really needing scores, playing into this breeze, a young side. It'll be Tommy Dunn to hit it, looking for the equaliser here. One point from two frees so far, that's now two from three. The number eight who's now playing in at full forward has tied up the match. Well, the remaining minutes in this first half are going to have to be very important for Tipperary. They've got to mount up the scores. Paul Ormond is being dragged back. The man who's marking him right now is Declan Ruth. Referee explains just why he's made his decision. So the tip team captain to replicate his deed of just a few seconds ago and stretch the Tipperary lead. And he's now got four points from freeze out of the tally of seven. Martin Story comes to try and break it down. Instead, he's broken it to Eddie Tucker. The other man playing on the 40. Good play there by William Marr. Tommy Dunn. Tip. A scoring chance here. And Dunn was fouled just as he was on that 13-meter line. Referee right up with the play. But for just a moment there, if he'd had enough uh, space, you felt he might have been in for a goal. Referee wanting everybody back. Dunn going for it. And it stopped on the line. And Sean Flood was fouled. Got a crack on the hand. And the forward's in after. Brian O'Mara was in there. This, the scene from behind the goal here. Stopped on the line by Shawnee Flood. Fouled as he was taking it out there. And then a bit of a knees up Mother Brown developed. Martin Story. Again, Marr goes in. Needing the assistance of David Kennedy, striking the ball well towards Declan Brown. Beautiful pick up by Declan Brown, and this time he's fouled by Colum Keogh. So that foul gives the man from Tumi Vara here another chance to stretch the Tipperary lead. And they've now got eight points. They're going to need each and every one of them, I'm sure the Tipperary fans will feel, heading into the second half. So a lead of three points, not a big one, considering the strength of the wind out there. Some holding. Referee having a word there with Ryan Quigley. It's the final minute of the first half, and here's John Lahey going for a score himself. And another lovely shot. The first point of the day from a free by John Lahey. And nine points to one, two. Liam Dunn there in the centre of that uh, group of substitutes and mentors next to Paddy Wickham, the county chairman. This is Eddie Enright. Good play by Sean Flood. Great defensive work by David Kennedy. Up towards Ormond. Tip looking for the first score of the second half. Ormond lacking assistance. 
Back to Eddie Tucker. Declan Brown, the intended target from that pass, as uh, the cornerback would seem to have dragged out his bat, and it's going to be a free in. Good work by Declan Brown. So done with the breeze right into his face, making little of that. And he's now got six points. So it's 10 points to one, two, or 10 points to five. Good ball down there, if they can keep it in play, and that's gone for a 65. The uh, full back there, Corcoran doing well under pressure from Dempsey. The free taker here is Paul Codd. And that's gone straight between the posts. A wonderful 65 by Paul Codd, and they go point for point at the start of the second half. Adrian Fenlon jumping in midfield, bounces down off the Tipperary man, however. Picked off the ground there by Brian O'Mara. Once again, the crouching figure of Paul Codd. And that one comes back, and that was swept across the face of goal there by Mitch Jordan. Still in play, rescued by Liam Sheedy. Breeze carrying it very near the sideline here. Eddie Enright did well. Now Paul Codd had a pass on to uh, Adrian Fenland. Didn't avail of that. And Tipperary get it back. Hit ahead there by Declan Brown inside towards Liam Cahill. And the referee penalising the Wexford back. Eugene Furlong. One of those to be booked already in the match. This was the effort earlier on by Paul Codd, and that came down off the post. So once again, the task of hitting this free accurately left to uh, Tommy Dunn. That's a very good point indeed, just inside the right-hand post in spite of the breeze, and that's seven for Tommy. Tipperary with a five-point lead. Wexford with this strong, strong breeze. John Lahey in a central position there to take command of that towards Eddie Tucker the next uh, four to five games will really test the mettle of the young Tipperary players all of that before the start of the championship Sheedy going back everybody appealing for it but it's the uh, other Wexford substitute who's Gary Lappin who's come in in the last few minutes who was out there contesting it comes back out towards Ryan Quigley and uh, Eddie Enright settling in there around the half-back line is really playing at midfield. Well, it's very much a backs-to-the-wall situation. Adrian Fenlon, Gary Laffin now in at full forward. Gary can't get a touch, doesn't need to, because that went beautifully over the bar. A fabulous sideline cut by Adrian Fenlon. So now they try to eat into the Tipperary lead. Collected here by Liam Cahill. And Declan Brown lets it drop the first time, but he has the scoring chance. And he takes it brilliantly. Declan Brown with his first point. He was isolated in front of goal there against Colum Kyo. What a wonderful delivery into him, made it all possible, and it's 13 points to 1 4. Knocked ahead that time by Barr. Returned by Declan Ruth. A lot of pressure on the tip back line. Rory McCarthy fouled and uh, the left hand of John Lahey in the air there acknowledging the error. 16 minutes are gone in the second half. This was John Lahey. Larry Murphy was coming across, flying across, and that's where John Lahey committed his foul. So, Wexford's free taker, Paul Codd, stepping up. Not much doubt about it. It comes once again, and Larry Murphy trying to torment Ramey Ryan. Good work by Ramey initially. Inside to Gary Laffin, he takes it very well, and he's struck, and down he goes. And it's got to be a free in. Feeling his hand there. Looked a bit painful. So Cod once more. 
and it flies between the post and over the crossbar. So 13 points to 1 6, 13 points to 9. Basically, as you were at half time. Edwin Fenland touching it down beyond his partner Ryan Quigley. That's William Marr. Up towards Liam Cahill. Jerkush helping it away. Out to Larry O'Gorman. Shouldered by Dunn. Here's Rory McCarthy. Stepping away from trouble. Taking it in his stride there was Remy Ryan. Nice ball forward for Tommy Dunn. Next man in here to receive the ball is the substitute Andy Maloney. Good ball, clever passing here by Tipperary. Lovely sidestep by Liam Cahill. A late challenge on it from Larry O'Gorman, but he gets it over the bar. And that's a very good point by Cahill. A second point for the uh, corner forward from Ballangarry. And it's 14 points to 1-6. Knocked out there again by the Tipperary defence, but only as far as Larry Murphy. And it's taken again by Eamon Corcoran. Great play by the fullback, settling into his task. Around Tipperary is better known as a halfback. Maloney. Can't take over. Instead, it's Adrian Fenland. In beyond David Kennedy. Gary Lappin coming out. Blocked down again by Eamon Corcoran. What a good match he's playing. A real test of the spirit and determination of the youngsters on the Tipperary team, and they're doing well. Tucker. And Tucker there getting that ball ahead of Eugene Furlong. Cahill coming in. Playing it inside here towards Declan Brown. And Brown has buried it in the corner of the Wexford net. A goal scorer in football and now a goal scorer in league hurling as well. 20 minutes into the second half and it's 114 to 16. Well, that is a reward for Tipperary's persistence, for strong, forceful play, for a display of cleverness, cuteness and character, and that's a great finish. Rory McCarthy taking an easy ball here, going by Eddie Enright. Wexford needing scores very, very quickly. That's another point. This is one for Rory McCarthy, but there's seven points adrift. Solid defensive work there by Dara Ryan. And a huge one from way out the field has gone sailing over the bar. Good work by Dara Ryan. 114 to 18. Rory Kinsella continuing to urge on his charges here. And Nicky English will be much the happier of the two bosses. Ken Hogan alongside him. Liam Cowell. Wexford really have been out of sorts this afternoon. It's going to be a free in. Referee had blown before the ball was struck by Liam Cahill. Well, in spite of having the breeze, Wexford have only scored six points in the second half so far. Tipperary have matched them all the way and even done better than that. And there's a ninth point now from a free for Tommy Dunn. And there's the score, 115 to 18. The match in time added on for injuries. Paul Ormond. Beating the attempted block, having the strength and force to put it over the bar and increase the lead and tip lead by eight points. This is good play here by Eddie Enright, but it was very good play overall by a Tipperary side who looked anxious to impress the fans and impress the new coach and selectors. Tommy Dunn finished with nine points, a fine performance by the captain. And in Central Stadium here, it's a big win for Tipperary. Another big win indeed, with the uh, final score reading. Tipperary 116, Wexford 18.
Yes, Nikki English's efforts to put Tipperary back in the big time in hurling remain on course, and we'll have a look at the table in a few moments. That's after we've taken a look at one of the other games from Division 1B. Now, this was the All-Ireland semi-final rematch between Kilkenny and Waterford. With matters so even in the division after the opening games, a win at Nolan Park would be a big boost to the victors. Marty Morrissey reports. For Waterford hurler Paul Flynn, it was a different sort of a day. Time to reflect on what happened two weeks ago when he was sent off against Wexford in controversial circumstances. On Thursday next, he faces the Games Administration Committee and could face a month or more suspension. Meanwhile, the free time gives him a chance to improve his six handicap golf. His hurling colleagues had a vital match to win and were also without flu victim Brian Green. The derby match with Kilkenny was a most interesting affair. The home side got a tonic start with an early goal from Michael White, getting the touch ahead of Kilkenny goalkeeper James McGarry. Brendan Landers was soundness personified between the posts for the Daishis, while Michael White was causing huge problems up front for Kilkenny. The Northsiders settled and put severe pressure on the water for defence, and only brave defending kept them at bay. Finally, Charlie Carter found the target with two great points to level the match at half-time, won five to eight points. The second half was only a minute old when Ken McGrath set Waterford on the road to victory, only to find Kilkenny in uncompromising form. A goal by Ken O'Shea seemed to inspire his colleagues as players like Eamon Kennedy sought to impress the selectors. In the final ten minutes, Kilkenny took control and points by Charlie Carter, Ken O'Shea, Stephen Grehan and Niall Maloney guaranteed success. Full-time score, Kilkenny 116, Waterford 112. Uh, Kilkenny retaining their edge over their near neighbours. A look through the results and tables now, starting with Division 1A. A big win for Offaly after those opening defeats in the league and Galway steadying themselves in the second half at Parnell Park to record an 11-point victory over Dublin. So, the Division 1A table looks like this. Galway with a clear advantage at the top, but they have played that extra game. Clare also going well. The next three counties are all on two points, with Offaly having played that one extra game as well. A Dublin and Kerry yet to record any points. Here's the results in Division 1B. Fortunes continue to fluctuate here. Leash with an impressive win over Cork. Kilkenny scoring that four-point win over Waterford. And in our featured match, we saw Tip secure the points against Wexford. So this is how it looks in the table. Tip, Kilkenny and Leash share the four points bracket. But Tip have managed that with a game less played. A Cork with one win and one defeat. Waterford and Wexford will be two anxious sides the next day out. And Down have yet to get off the mark in the division. The results in Division 2 now. Roscommon continue to go well, this time against London. A good win also for Wicklow in Arklow. And the other wins today going to Meath and Trim. Derry taking the points from Scotstown. And Kildare beating Carlow. So, in the divisional table, Roscommon and Wicklow continue to set the pace after three rounds. Derry, Mead and Kildare stay well in touch, while Monaghan and Carlo are still waiting for their first points. And the results in Division 3. Now, Armagh taking the points in Longford, Sligo taking the points at Irvingstown, Loud getting a win in Leitrim and Mayo, the only home winners on the day in this section. So, Sligo with a full complement of points in this section. Fermanagh have lost ground as a result of their defeat. Four counties remain pointless. Now, Cavan there, the side not involved in today's programme of matches. One game played today in the National Football League. Offaly starting to pull themselves together in the football as well as in the hurling, beating Leitrim in Carrigan Shannon. And elsewhere in Gaelic games this weekend, there was activity in the Dr. McKenna Cup. Antrim with a three-point win over Donegal and Armagh beating Fermanagh in the other fixture in that competition. Now, in the Leicester Under-21 Football Championship, the final will be contested between Leash and Westmead. Leash scored a good win over Dublin and Tullamore, while Westmead had a one-point victory over Wicklow in Newbridge. Well now, after all those facts and figures, it's time for us to take a break. When we come back, we'll be updating you on what's been happening in soccer, and especially in the game between UCD and Cork City. 